See what's cracking, baby? Man, you really brought the heat today. You know, a little, little Edison vibe, you know what I'm saying? You know Wait, what I'm saying? But did you bring the dad socks? I can't. Oh, you can't see them? No, it's fogging up. You brought too much heat. I got something. Oh. Right here, sir. Get the window, get the window. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Do the other one, do the other one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you are, sir. Thank you. Voila. Can I get a tip or? Get out of here, kid. Oh, you did bring the dad socks. I can see them now. Those are amazing. That's a full size. That's a full size. She, she, she won every color. That's a full size. Hello to every single member of the FS Army watching across the world. Of course, I'm your co-host, Brendan Dunn. I'm Matt Welty. James, baby. And we have with us here today Edison Chen. He is a designer, a one-time rapper, co-founder of Clot. Edison, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, it's good to be on here with you guys. I'm Hello. Feeling good. We're, we're happy to have you. We're going to talk about your sneaker history. The first thing we want to talk about, though, are the shoes everyone has on feet. So, Welty, please tell me what you're wearing right now. Been doing a little more Asics lately. Shout out to the good folks at Asics for sending over these kits. A6 Gel Light 3s in the chalk colorway. Okay, Trinidad, what do you got? It's a clean shoe, Welty. Um, you know, we got Big Ed on today, so I had to bring that Big Ed energy. I got my uh, clots on today, friends and family colorway, or I don't know. I, it's something, I like this colorway, it's a really good chalk. colorway. Chalk, he's got the chalk. The chalk you know what I'm saying? Got my new dad socks on, you know, natural to new white. That's how we rock it. Okay, Edison, what do you have on feet? I got my, 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 new, my new kicks. Okay. The solar reds. Yeah, these are, yeah, pretty, pretty rare. Okay, okay. you're showing coming, out. You're showing out, Ed, all right. But yeah, yeah, these are the reissues of uh, ID shoe that we made for the Touch the Sky uh, tour. Kanye came to Hong Kong. I think this was before his Nike deal, and we, we, we just wanted to welcome him with like a nice little surprise. So we made, I think, six or eight pairs of these. And uh, this is just a chance for everyone that kind of loved that shoe to get the real thing. Edison, I know you've had a trillion sneakers in your history, but what's your most regrettable sneaker purchase of all time? Oh man, I, I don't know. Uh, Everyone's got one. Every sneaker has its own little unique thing, but I do remember there's a pair of Pumas that I bought when I was a kid that just destroyed my feet. They were kind of like aqua socks, you know? And I'm feeling my feet stinging like crazy, and I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I got stung by jellyfish or what's going on. And I come out the, I come out of the water. <laughs> And I'm just bleeding from my feet. Like, you know, it's like the sand is red. <laughs> this sounds like a lawsuit. Oh my God. It's like a murder scene. <laughs> Golly. You know, shouts to the Puma, no whatever, more. but you know, it, those shoes didn't really work out for me. They're like, you know, I don't think they even make them anymore. So I guess they got the MO. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got new balances on today. This is a burn rubber collaboration from a while back, MT 580s. Just in case the 580s come back around and, and, and you see me in 580s. Detroit. I, I've been doing 580s. Okay, Woo, so just, just, come on. just know that. Okay, guys. Trendsetter. Let's talk sneaker news. First piece of sneaker news we want to discuss is this Nike Air Force One collaboration with Scars Pizza, New York City Slice Shop, selling for $121,000 oh. via a Sotheby's auction Ooh. out in Hong Kong. I I, I don't understand from this our, price. From our good friend of the program. Big car kid. I, I make shoes. I'm, I'm different. different. Paul Givleckian, PG Nose. Paul sold the shoes. This, is, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I love the pears, I love the pie, good people, good food, good shoes, but how do these sell for this much? Edison, can you fill us in here? You're a Zhang Gang Ren, like, who, who out in Hong Kong bought these? I mean, I don't know who bought them, um, but shout outs to them, because they're crazy, <laughs> but you know, I guess they're a crazy sneakerhead, so thank you for supporting. But you know, I think that what's interesting about these pairs is that re Nike very rarely does this anymore, you know? Um, yeah, back in the day, late 90s, early 2000s, they always had these like 24, 48 pair hyper strikes that everybody would just want to kill somebody for. Um, you know, the stash drifts, the F for the love of monies, you know, all this other stuff, you know. In the new phase of Nike, this is it's very rare. Like, you know, they, they, they at least do a couple hundred or a thousand pairs or something now, at least. But you don't I think like the, the money is funny. And I'm not but you don't think you don't think that well, like, hearing one hundred and twenty thousand dollars on a pair of sneakers that clearly like they're worth a lot, but not worth that much sounds like some sort of like money laundering sort of situation. Oh, money laundering. Oh, like the whole, wow. like where people take like funny money yeah, invested in the art and then, you know, to- Funny money, uncut gems. 
Well, I think I think first of all, like one hundred twenty thousand is too little to you know for for real real money laundering. <laughs> so right. Mm. right, no disrespect to the people at Scar's Pizza. I, I just really think that there's a lot of there's a lot of kids in China with a lot of money, and a lot of kids in China right now, like especially this this they, we call them Fu or Dai, right? Fu or Dai is like the the young tycoon sons, right? Like you know, and they're kind of like you know from from what I heard is. You ain't you ain't somebody if you don't have a cause painting. Before it was like the off-white Jordans and like they're graduating and graduating. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is just some guy really trying to flex real hard, really really hard. You know, there's 120 man. I don't know. I gotta call Clark and, and see what's up first. <laughs> I'm confused about the dough and I don't mean to. Have, More power to the person who bought it, man. I got a couple pairs. Tell him to call me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> have you ever had Scar's Pizza? Yeah. I need to try it. It's good. Edison, speaking about shoes at auctions like this, have you ever resold sneakers? No, man. I mean, you know, I think, I think maybe when I was younger, uh, I definitely did, just because I was like in the in the hustle of like getting samples and doing this and doing that and being able to get shoes. But then I want those Hiroshis, and you know, I had to trade up or sell a few, you know. But <laughs> take them to Sotheby's. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm kind of. Really caught off guard by, right. by by the aftermarket right now because, you know, like when, when we started kind of doing this new wave of clot and Nike, um, we get heat everywhere we go. Like, oh, you guys don't make enough of the kids. Like now I have to pay five times online and buy the shoe. And then we're like, you know, OK, so progressively we we increase our quantities. We increase our quantities. And then some people are like, hey, thank you for making the shoe not resellable. I got to get three pairs at retail. And it's like, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, so what do you guys want us to do? You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of weird how that has shifted the dynamic of sneaker culture, you know? Like, because I don't look at uh, resale value as the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The the success or failure. Yeah, success or failure of a shoe because like, you know, some people are like, hey, just make 500 pairs of it and you know, it'll be worth 15,000. And it's like, okay, sure. But then who can buy it? And what are we doing? Like, that's not us, you know, we're, we're a front facing retail store. So my thing in, in always talking with my company and everything is just trying to make enough to satisfy the market and, and, and trying to find that fine line so that people can get it. And you know, if it resells, it resells, but I know a lot of people try to use that as the barometer, but I think if the shoe looks good, it's a good shoe. All right, more sneaker reselling news. Nike says that bots won't help you get exclusive access on the sneakers app. And How? Did you see this pop up over the week? I mean, bots are like the, the Thanos, right? He's like Thanos coming every time, like you know, like where, yeah, where are you, where, where, what's gonna happen this time? So there's all these sort of like functions that people do on sneakers app to you know read articles and you know enter emails interact with and it a little bit, get all of this. So people think that if you have a bot interact with all these articles and whatnot, it gives you better chance of get, gaining exclusive access. But Nike actually came out and said bots will not help you gain exclusive access to the shoes, which was a bold move from the brand to address it publicly. Do you think that's good that they're like taking a stance on that sort of stuff? I think it's an interesting and bold statement. Um, you know, uh, hopefully they can do it. And if they can, then maybe they should share the software with us. Right. <laughs> because it's it seems like an uphill battle every time it's like, you know, you cover the back door, the side door, and the front window, and then they come in through the attic or something. I mean, for what it's worth, I've heard that bots don't get through on sneakers yeah. that much, but mm -hmm. no one's ever gonna be happy with something like sneakers. Sometimes I feel like you just gotta blow up the whole thing and start over, you know, take the cartridge out and blow on it or something like that. <laughs> blow that cartridge, boy. Destroy the build, right? It's a hard thing to deal with. I mean, you know, you have the physical so-called squatters, and then you have the internet bots, and it's like before you're like, oh, let's do the raffle, it'll be fine. And now it's like, yeah, and it's, it's it's unfortunate, but you know, I guess the market's hot and people want it, so. To me, that's what life is about. Somebody trying to hack something and somebody trying to hack the person who hacked that. Yeah. It's like somebody always planet. getting hacked. Hackers. You know, hackers, hackers, hackers. So it's like, you make something to beat my bot, I'm gonna make a bot to beat your, you know, security, yeah. your firewall. Bots. Figure it out. 
Call me Snowden. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ed, let's talk about some sneaker history, my brother. Where did sneakers start for you, man? I know you're a Jordan guy. I mean, you're an overall shoe guru. Where does sneakers start for you, though, man? Yeah, I mean, my, my, my first thing is probably, like, the Jordan 13s lows, which is why, like, the first Jordan collab we did was the 13 low. Right. Obviously, they're the 4s, the 5s, the 6s, the 7s, they get all these things. But, like, when I really was in the field playing basketball, it was the 13s and the 13 lows, especially, um, just because they were easier to get. <laughs> um, I'd say Hiroshi really got me back into, into sneakers mm. um, in a weird way because... The sneaker wasn't really a sneaker it was an air woven the woven was like whoa what, what what's going what is this you know what i mean and at the same time i think they had nike jp and coleman jr they did the haven which we also kind of re-released and everyone hated but we loved at the same time i think that was like the revival of nike in the way that they were looking at shoes so a super wave of Air Force Ones with like neon pink, neon blue, you know, green and West Indies and this and that were floating out and dunks started to pick up and you know, there were the Mulders and all these like hey, yeah. collab shoes and stuff. And that's really my my real introduction to like sneakerology. Nice. Edison, when did you decide to open a sneaker store? Because I know you have the juice stores. Like, was that a big step for you? We opened um, Accu, you know, shout outs to Mike and Tom. Accu family, Shanghai love, uh, but we really opened that to really push that we can get accounts and sell sneakers, to be honest with you. Yeah. Back then, it was an uphill battle even to get Nike to give us a shoe, you know? We, 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 the first Kiss of Death shoe, we begged and begged and begged for a shoe and they said no to us continuously and then randomly one day, they're like, oh, here's an Air Max, <laughs> do it. And we're like, Air Max, what about the Air Force? And we decided to you know, be, be connoisseurs of the sneaker culture. So we did like a a big art show with Hiroshi, Futura, Stash, um, I think Jeff Staple. And we brought their so-called grails or greatest hits and we, ex we, we exhibited them as the first moment of the sneaker store. So Edison, how big is sneaker culture out in China now? Is it just a mainstream thing at this point? Uh, around the time when the Hiroshi Black Silks came out, I think that's when I knew, that's when I knew that it's mainstream in China when my boss, who wears leather shoes only, mm. was like, hey, can you come have a meeting with me? And I'm like, sure, yeah, hey, what's up? And you're like, blah, 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 blah. Hey, can I get a pair of shoes? I'm like, for you or for your son? And he's like, for you. And I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I got you for sure, you know? So like <laughs> billionaire tycoons that are usually only seen in suits and, you know, Two, you know, three-piece suits or, or, or wearing Nikes and because they're hot. And that means everybody and their mama and their papa are wearing Nikes, you know I mean? Wearing the sneakers. So, you know, it, it's interesting, especially if you go to China, I mean, you see a grip of people with Yeezys on, you know what I mean? And like cool or not cool, whatever, that's up to you, right? But if you see them on feet of uncles and aunties and kids, you know that it's already infiltrated. You know, sneaker, sneaker culture has resurged in the past five to 10 years, I'd say. Are you mad at the resellers? How do we feel about resellers in general? Do I hate them? Everybody got to hustle, man. You know, everybody got to hustle. I think it's just the market. I mean, you know, if people weren't willing to pay, they wouldn't be doing it. So, you know, there's both sides of the story, you know? Oh, so yeah, if, yeah. if people were adamant about just paying retail for for sneakers, then the, the market would change a little bit. Edison, the the Claw Air Max ones originally come out in 2006. They get re-released this year. You know a lot of hype on it, especially for a lot of us older sneakerheads who remember the shoe when they first came out. Has the shoe matched your expectations for it with the re-release? With it being brought back into the market? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's two stores, two sides to the story, I guess. Oh, you know, yeah. like we have Juice, and then there's like Global, right? So. For us at Juice, the shoe was very well received. Everybody, everybody into it, right? So, you know, but I think when you feed someone and you feed them too full, they have to complain. And then when you feed them too little, they also complaining. So yeah. it's like finding that, that, that right little point. It's like everyone's like, oh, we want the shoe. How come we can't have the shoe? We want the shoe. We can't have the shoe. So then we make enough to give to everyone. And they're like, yo, you made too many shoes. Now everybody has it. And it's like, <laughs> Keep making more. Yeah. They flood the market. 
I don't even know what I what you want me to do anymore. You know what I mean? Like next time I'm just gonna make ten pairs and y'all can just bid on it on, on Christie's. Yeah, right. Everything's gone well with these first two drops and hopefully this third one will. And uh, like right, the, the the sample that yeah, never right. made it, right? Yeah, I mean I want people to have the shoe, either if it's the original, the the brown colorway, or this new one, and I just want to see people rocking it and having fun with it. I mean, you know, 2006 to 2021 is 15 years. A 15 year wait is long, you know? It's yummy, yummy, yum. <laughs> <laughs> How tasty, uh, what, what does it taste like? Uh, what does it taste? Are we gonna get a sneaker lick? <gasps> Oh, that's yeah, how you this feel? This is even more thinner than the other one. It's like okay. an ADL backing, so. It's like, it's really easy to fold down. You, 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 you don't mind doing that? The stepping on the heel? Sometimes I see people I stepping feel, on the like heel and it hurts my heart. I feel like that's man. <laughs> I like people having a multi-purpose function of how they want to wear it, right? So that's why we didn't make it with the thick, you know, the, the thick heel. Um, but I don't think it's sacrilegious. I think it's, 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 it's full of flavor. I mean, you know. I think it's a very it's a very Asian thing too. Yeah, I need I need to understand that. It's just like slip on, slip off, you know. Like I've, I've seen people on the train like stepping on the back of their shoes, and it just seems like the most like disrespectful thing you can do to a sneaker. Which actually goes back to the original concept of the shoe of why there was a clear panel because the clear panel was to mimic the 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 vibe that you're actually wearing a sandal, so you can see your feet. Right. right. How long did you want to do that? How long have you been waiting to do that shoe? 15 years, I guess. <laughs> Edison, do you remember when, like, I think it was like 2010 when, like, Nike ID had brought back the Air Max Ones and, like, I think people were making, they put a bunch of options and people were making that shoe a lot on there. Like, how did you feel about that? I wasn't, I wasn't hot about that. <laughs> He's like, pay me, <laughs> shoot, pay me, motherfuckers. <laughs> I thought that they would lock the, According to my knowledge, that this this <laughs> this lockup of this this shoe with these colors, we're, yeah, we're going to be locked out of the ID system. Are you going to try to send a pair to Kanye? I know, I know, maybe he can or can't wear them, but are you going to ship a pair to him? Yeah, we we send we send Ye uh, everything that we do. You know, hopefully one day he can rock them. He can pull them out from the vault. I was about to say, you can ship me, you can ship me his pair, bro. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I had gotten the chance to interview you, I think, in 2017 when the V Lone Air Force One came out, and it surprised me because it was an interview with Bari, but then you hopped on the phone too through Nike, and I didn't realize that you were like involved in V Lone behind the scenes. How involved are you in the brand? I'm like the coach, I'd say. I'm the coach. Uh, Bari uh, is the creative director, the designer, Mr. Velo. Right. I think just because you know the, the, the raw talent and and the the kind of like the the hood creativity that Bari has is so like raw that he needs someone to lean on that he would listen to. I'm not necessarily am I always in the conversation, but when the shit hits the fan, um, I'm definitely the first one called in. Right. Our new drop that we just had. Have, has authenticator tags now. So everything V-Loan right now has to go through a blockchain. That's good because there's a lot of fake V-Loan out here, Edison. That, I feel like that's one thing we gotta be careful with. The fake V-Loan in the streets is heavy right now. Yeah, this can eradicate the fakes because unless you're from the hackers movie, Angelina Jolie and them, you're not gonna be able to get into, <laughs> get into this program. Yeah, into this program to say that your garment is real. And you then you have to have all these individual QR codes. Like, there's this whole process. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> everybody and their mama tells me that they're buying V loan from this guy or that guy. And, like, you know, they got this and they're selling this. And I'm like, man, this is this is crazy. So, sorry, scammers. Mm, this is scammer right now, crying in this hotel room with a bunch of laptops around. Crying Guap Dad tears. Oh, no, not a Guap Dad tears. <laughs> Ed, can you tell me a little bit about the Sakai Clot um, Nike LD Waffle collab? I mean, if there was, I bet you it's really, really dope. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we saw some photos out I there, love man. That. Yeah. We saw some photos. Yeah. Let's go, Ed. All I know, all I know, Edison, is that it's going to be better than the John Paul Gautier Sakai LD waffles because that's the worst <laughs> sneaker I've ever seen. I think it's, it, you know, honestly, I'm not a big fan of the shoe either, but you know, I can, I can respect the energy, you know, and I think that. I think that the, the person that likes that shoe is not the people we hanging with. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> it looks, yeah, it looks like a, it's like, <laughs> looks like Leatherface, you know? Oh my God. It, it's definitely baseball-esque and you know, you better not put your foot in the air because someone might come with a bat and smash it, you know? I love that. <laughs> and I said, I want to ask you, you, you've done a lot of collaborations. Obviously you did the Jordan 1 mids, that was a big one, but the Jordan 1 high <laughs> is the one, right? Yeah, I mean, I love the Jordan 1 high, I love the Jordan 4s, I love the Jordan 5s, like, when are we going to get a chance? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, like I said, the first time I did Jordans, I, I had a strange request to them, and they all thought I was going insane, was I wanted to do the 13 lows. Put me in, coach. But luckily, I think every time that we've, we've, we've tried to touch something, we, we add some type of spin on it that's kind of so left field that has never been seen on that shoe. So either, you know, you can hate it, but you, can, you can't say that you've ever seen anything that looks similar to that shoe, so. Okay. I will tell you though, we were in we were in Dubai, the three of us, and Trinidad had on the craziest fit I've ever seen with the clot 13 lows. Ended up in Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> That's all the same fit right there. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a fit. I appreciate you guys sent me those shoes out of the blue, and I really appreciated it because it was so random. Can't do our crazy. And I, I'm not a big 13 low person, but I'm gonna tell you in Dubai, I went God mode with that. I, that was a God mode <laughs> outfit, bro. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Edison, every single week here on the show, we punish someone in the worst take section for something terrible they did or said last week as decided by the YouTube commenters. We make them switch out their shoes for something awful. It is almost always me this week. I am so happy to announce that it is not me. It is Trinidad James Bang! for his hot take, saying that the Union 4s saved the Jordan 4. Well, do you think that the, Jordan, the Union Jordan 4s, they saved the Jordan brand? No, but I like that shoe I, a lot. It's a I, hot take. I, I, <laughs> a, I mean, do not give us any excuses. Take off your shoes. Put on these terrible shoes. Tell us in the comments. Yo, if there's that distinction. FS Army, y'all will wait till I, feel, I put on an I amazing feel, outfit. I, I feel like I feel like this was something the real version Trinidad had something like this back in the day. <laughs> red bottom? No, minus all those spikes. But I definitely had me a pair of red bottoms. Put your spiky <laughs> shoes on, guys. I'm so happy. This that my is like is over. you could you could go to jail. This is like a weapon, man. Bro. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I seriously thought that those are Louboutins, but I guess they're the poor poor man Louboutins. No, these are these are Steve. These some Bonds. <laughs> you gotta put some Steve. These some Bontons. On. These some Bontons, bro. <laughs> I toss these to you, but it might impale might you kill me. in the process. Man, FS Army, y'all let me wear this nice no ass play. outfit for y'all to make me take off my shoes. Why y'all do this to me? You did it to yourself. Like, come on. Put Anywho, on. I, and I can't wait till in more years when those Union Fours is running the world. God damn it, I'm doubling down. Who want to fight me? Me. Ed, my brother. <laughs> we also do a segment on the show called Drip Flip or Skip. Drip meaning that it looks good. Flip meaning that you resell it. And skip meaning that you don't rock with it at all. Our first shoe in Drip Flip or Skip, sir, is going to be the LeBron Space Jam. It's coming out, guys. I hope you go see it with your kids. Um, but the Space Jam LeBron, 18 low. Big collab pack. Ed, I'm gonna start with you. Is this a drip? Is this a flip? Is this a skip? I drip. I drip these. I, I like uh, mismatching shoes. I think that it's 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 an interesting thing. I do understand that the like 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 the Wiley Coyote, like the Space Jam vibe, and but I'm a King James fan. So whatever whatever the King says, we go. You an Xbox or a PlayStation guy? Just asking. I'm definitely a PlayStation guy. I actually kind of like these shoes and I feel like they look about as cool as they could, but I'm space jamming these right to the trash can because we're still not in the fucking movie despite begging for it for what feels like years now. So it's a skip. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, T. These actually look kind of cool. I'll give them that. I yeah. like the, the, the mismatch Why shoes. Why Coyote? But you can't top the Space Jam Air Jordan 11s no matter what you do. Um, For myself, I don't like to go against the king because it's LeBron. Best not miss. But I am not into this shoe. I'm not into it. I hoop in it or whatever. I can't spend my money on it. I don't even think you could buy it. I think it got to be friends and family. So I'm neither friend or family. So I didn't get a pair. I'm going to skip this. Uh, moving forward. Lemon. We have our off-white Air Force One lemonade. Ed, talk to me. How does this make you feel? Is this a drip, flip, or skip? If I was a regular person, I would probably flip these because they're probably worth mad money, right? Yeah, look at Ed getting money out Cashing here. Cashing out. Sotheby's time. <laughs> My man. <laughs> Edison, what would you be buying with the bag off of reselling these shoes? Man, probably like a, a, a box of Prism basketball cards. 
try to d- then double up my money again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to I wanna lock uh, Edison Chen and Virgil in a, a, a pattern shop, just both of y'all, and you got to walk out with a shoe. I just want to see... Who would who would walk out on top? Sounds I like, like that. I like that sounds, type. Sounds it's like, like you throw two men in there, just show. throw a knife in a cage with two guys. <laughs> like what's up? Yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, Anywho, so let me not get that started. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. I think it's cool that they're dropping it at the ICA in Boston. Spent a lot of time there buying sneakers and streetwear, but this is a flip. The bag on this is going to be way too huge. And also, I'm disappointed that Gucci Mane wasn't involved in the rollout of the Lemonade Air Force Ones. <laughs> Uh, Brendan Dunn? <laughs> um, you know what? I, I do quite like this shoe, even though I feel like it's something I probably wouldn't end up putting on my feet. But I'm going to call it a drip just in case it urges the universe to bring a pair my way. So you can flip it in turn? No. <laughs> no. When are you going to no. put it on your feet? What if you can only get them if you can go straight to feet? What's I'll up? do it. Okay, cool. You know what? I don't care about this shoe. Skip. I, a man don't give me no shoes. I don't have none of these shoes. If, I don't care, I'm gonna skip. I'm tired of cheering for something that don't cheer for me. That's a skip, a super skip. Oh, jeez. Uh, moving forward. Nike Clot Air Max One. Kiss of death. This looks familiar. <laughs> 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 we here today, baby. <laughs> she at home now. I, 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 I drip it, obviously. Uh, I would hope so, goddammit. Please, please just drip it. Edison, I was I was joking with the guys before this. I was like, what would happen if I skipped his own shoe in front of him? And I'm like, that's just such an asshole move because I actually really like these and uh, it's a drip. No, if you, if you should skip. No, 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 I'm, I, it, was, it, was, it was just a joke to see what the reaction would it's be. It's a bad joke, Ed. He has a few of those in his pocket at all times. Bad it's a, jokes, it's a just drip. pulls them out like Yeah, a I know, like a dad sock, right? <laughs> Like a dad sock. I mean, look, honestly, this is perfect shoe for summertime right now. I mean, you know, it's in the in the, in the the mad heat. You know, people always say, one of the things that they always talk about the kiss of death is why is there a clear panel? I explained it to you earlier already, but this one actually has a mesh, a mesh top and it's very breathable, very good for the summer. So y'all better drip this. <laughs> this is a drip. This is one of those unattainable sneakers that you couldn't possibly even see in real life, let alone own for a long time. And now you can. So this is a trick. It, it's so amazing. It takes me back to when I was working in Atlanta and um, this uh, streetwear store, mom and pops called Ginza. We used to sell Kid Robot. And just like the streetwear colorways or whatever, just like that pink and gray, it takes me back to the brain wreck SBs. Nike, bring back the Kid Robot Air Max Ones, please. Ooh, that's a heater. If you know, you know. But for me, this is a drip. Um, I'm, I got the other two pairs now. Hey. Why not? Three's company. Three's a company. Pink and gray is always going to hit to me. It's one of the best colorways on shoes. Ed, we also do outfits on this segment. I don't think it's any better outfits to do in the entire freaking world than Edison Chen outfits. Outfit number one. (laughs) It's on you, brother. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go, Ed. Yeah, Ed, we in the field, baby. We outside. Talk to me. What the hell is going on here? Yeah. Um... This was a this was just a fun day out. It was never supposed to be, uh, you know. This photo was never supposed to surface on Complex. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Universal Studios chilling with Homer, you know, getting the donut and talk about beer. I think they're superstars on feet. How you feel? Is this a drip flipper skip? I think I'd have to skip this one. Okay, to okay. I gotta yeah. say, uh, Homer had triple bypass surgery, so he got to be careful with the clots, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, no, this this is a drip. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Simpsons fan, so you got to be the man himself. Sheesh. I don't know what Daniel Stellan that is. This your man's right here, Walter? <laughs> this is good. Sheesh. This is a drip. I know you're a big Nike guy, Edison, but good to see you in the Adidas. I do need a pair of those Clot ZX Flux laundry bags if they're anywhere out there in the world. <laughs> Putting it out in the universe. Yeah. This is a flip. Man. This kind of has an NFT vibe to it. I would ever like, what the hell hey, is free Edison? Ideas. What is Edison Chen doing with Homer in Adidas? <laughs> NFT, flip. <laughs> Moving forward, Tom Sachs, Tom Edison Chen. Where are you? Is this Fashion Week? You can tell are it's Fashion you... Week because of the pose. He's walking like it's Fashion Week. They say don't move your arms when you're walking or moving forward on the runway. I have no idea, man. I have no idea. It looks, it looks like some type of Fashion Week thing, right? 
I hate these moments. I hate them. Like I, I, some people like revel in them. Like they, they, they walk back to the front door and then walk back out. They're like, one more time. And then they walk back to the front door and walk back out. Really? <laughs> <laughs> calling paparazzi on yourself. What are we doing? <laughs> Like, let me make sure I hit this walk. No, I just don't, I just don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, am I supposed to sashay or am I supposed to like, you know, show my ass? So what am I supposed to do? You, like, you, you know, have so. to be somewhere like relatively cool because there's secretly a pair of CDG 180s behind you. And I feel like it just doesn't happen randomly in the wild. I do like this, the, the shoes though. Yeah, and, and the t-shirt is one of my tour tees. So I, I, I'm gonna have to say that this is pretty drippy because I love, I love the Tom Sack shoes. Okay, well T. Yeah. Confident, Edison, I love this. Great shoes, even though some people have made them bad. Drip. Yeah, people really did water this shoe down, and I'm not talking about you, Edison, but I still love the sneaker. It still looks good. It's a drip. Two guys and a knife. Let's do three guys. Edison Chin, Virgil Abloh, Tom Sachs in a cage. They gotta walk out making a shoe. Only <laughs> one knife? Who you? No knife, just materials to make a shoe, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is a drip. <laughs> the shoulders. It's the shoulders Strut, for me. Strutting Ed. your stuff. It's the shoulders it's for me, Ed. <laughs> Last but not least, family time and Kevin Hart. Um, this is Christmas Day, and uh, my wife oh, actually, Shupe, she she loves Kevin Hart. I don't know how, but she like you know when I met her, she oh I love Kevin Hart. Do you know him? And I'm like no, nah, I, I don't know him. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. And uh, we went to this Christmas game, and he's sitting literally four or five seats away from us, and. Uh, at halftime, my wife is like, oh, should I go take a picture with him? Should I go take a picture with him? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And she's like, oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh my God, no, she did hit you. With you know, and I just dragged her over there and I was like, hey, Mr. Hart, would you be kind enough to take a photo with my daughter and my, and my wife? He's like, of course, I love your creations. I love your oh. shoes. And I was like, shook, like, oh my God, he knows, he knows. <laughs> And he took a photo with my wife and my daughter first, and then he was like, hey, come in, come in and take a photo. And I was like, ooh, you know, because I'm a Kevin Hart <laughs> That's <fan> amazing. <laughs> so drip, drip all day. Wonderful, wonderful. Sometimes you got to send your daughter over there to ask the celebrity, okay, my mama get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rose gold Air Force Ones are awesome. I love, I love the humility and the... Do you get that a lot, being like a big superstar, like overseas, but in the States, people may not be as familiar with your career that like you can fly under the radar? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, a lot of people think I'm an asshole, some ego egocentric bastard, but actually I'm really low key and down low, you know? So there's been a lot of times where I meet people and I'm just shocked that they know who I am. Um, and it's not usually because of my music or my movies. It's usually because of my sneakers. Yeah. I try to stay off the radar a lot, which is one of the reasons why I moved to America, just to have some space, um, you know. Um, but once in a while, I appreciate the 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 the, the love. Best you know. of both worlds. It's the best. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, this is a drip to me, especially because your daughter has the Tom Sachs on. It's like the, the whole family's going to Mars. I love that. Woo, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, family vibes all day. Big family drip, and you got some random black guy in the picture. It's amazing. It's like a Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's incredible. <laughs> Edison, before we get out of here for the day, we want to breeze to the comment section and see what people have been saying about us on YouTube for the past week, which is always a fun time. We have one from Lucas Smith saying, South beaches remind me of Wealthy's hair. Better back in the day, but I'm glad it's making a comeback. <laughs> Damn, that's a good goddamn joke. Darren's second that saying. That was Sergio. That was Sergio. That was Sergio. It had to be Sergio. Y'all need to shoot an FSR episode in Cape Town, South Africa. Big ups, Dad, Wealthy, and Brendan. We, we might have I gotta go to all Africa, the bubble but... cop boys yeah, out there. with the techies on. Alexander Brescia says, I was depressed and forgot it was Thursday, but thanks to this upload, I am going to bed happy. We are happy to bring you some happiness. We are happy you're watching and commenting. This has been another episode of Full Size Run. Of course, I'm your co-host, Brendan Dunn. I'm Matt Wealthy. I got taste. I'm turning that James. Edison Chen, thank you. EDC, bitch. <laughs> she won every color, that's a full size. Buy a six for my kids, bought a seven for my chick. Listen, the episode is finished, but we're actually not finished here. I need you to subscribe. Please subscribe. Get us to 500,000. Get us to a million. Get us to a bajillion. Guys, this is season 10. 
if you've been with us with this journey for the last umpteen years, we need more subscribers. We deserve more subscribers, and you will get us more subscribers. Handle also, that. don't forget, Soul Collector app. Download that best price comparison tool out there. Do it. Now.